Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll take a look at how you can create layered sliders with one regular seeming layer and a layer on top of that showing a device frame with more images. As you can see, it makes for a very interesting look with dynamic changes and automated looping. To help us create this look for our site, we'll be using the preview slider widget from the key add-ons for Elementor plugin. With this widget, you can create sliders like this to showcase your images in a very attractive, eye-catching way. The preview slider comes with all kinds of customization options, which makes it easy to integrate with your site design. So let's see how to make the preview slider widget work for us. Go to the back end. In the Elementor sidebar, look for the preview slider. There it is. Drag it over to the right. And this is what the widget looks like by default. It has one item and it represents this bottom layer of images, so right now it's actually one image on repeat. And we have the device frame option that lets us pick the look of the second layer. It's set to mobile by default, but you can switch it to tablet, laptop, or set a custom frame. With this last one, you can insert a custom device frame image. So if you want to show a different device as a frame over your slider, this is where you'd add it. For my slider, I want mobile as the frame, so I'll put that back. OK. Then let's open the item. In here we have the main image and the device image. The main image is the one we see in the first layer, and the device image is the one in the device frame in the second layer. So the first thing to do is set the main image. Click to choose, and I'll use this one. Insert media. And then we can set the device image. Since my chosen device is a mobile phone, the image I set should have a portrait orientation so it fits well within the frame. If you pick a different device, then you'll need an image with a different orientation. There. And don't worry, we'll sort out these edges peeking out from the frame when we come to the style section. Next, I'll add more items so I can carry on adding images to my slider. I'll just speed up the video for that part since the steps are identical. You just need to add the images you want to the appropriate layer of the slider. Ok, here we are. I have three items and they all have distinct images. Now we can move on to the options under slider settings. The first option here lets us enable the slider loop. It's set to yes by default and it allows the slider to keep circling perpetually. Then enable centered slides is used to place the active slide of the bottom layer right in the center of the slider. If I switch it to yes, nothing changes since I have three items so one is always inevitably in the middle. And keeping the slider autoplay enabled gets the slider moving as soon as the page loads, so the visitors don't have to trigger it in any way. The slider duration is the amount of time that the slide is shown before being replaced by the next one. It's 5000 milliseconds by default and I'll keep it that way. And I'll do the same for the slider animation duration. That's the duration of the animated effect that makes the item seem to slide. Then we have the Enable Slider Navigation option. By default, the navigation is enabled. We can see the arrows within the slider sides. I prefer having them off with full width sections, so I'll switch this to No. And we have a similar option for the slider pagination. It's enabled by default and I'll keep it that way. The pagination bullets are tucked away here, but I'll fix that when we start styling the slider. And this is why I didn't hesitate to disable the navigation, because I still have the pagination for my slider, which visitors can use. Alright, after this we have the image proportions. There are several options for you to choose from, but I'll be keeping the original setting. Then we have enable partial columns. It's set to no by default, but if you enable it by switching this to yes, then you can set a percentage for the partial columns value. This value represents how much of the incoming and outgoing slides will be shown on the slider's edges. I'm going to set 0.07 here. Then the number of columns option lets us set how many slides will be visible at any one time in the slider. I'll reduce this to 2. But since I have centered slides and partial columns enabled, the sides count as one whole column, so I have a total of two columns. 
The next option, Columns Responsive, allows us to set how many columns will be shown on a range of different screen widths. I'm going to set custom so I can decide for each width range. Now, we don't have an option for the largest screens, meaning desktops, as that's the default screen size, so it requires no particular responsiveness settings. So, the first option here is for a range of screen widths that encompass different laptops. And you'd use this drop down to pick the number of columns you want to show. For this, I'm going to stick with 2. And I'll set the same number for the next one. Think of it as max screen size. And then for the two after this, the landscape orientation on tablets and portrait orientation on tablets range. But I'll set one for the last two, which are landscape on mobile phones and portrait on mobile phones range. Following that, we have the space between items option. As its name suggests, it lets us increase the space between the slides, like this. You can see the space grow when I increase the value. I'll set 115 pixels for the space here. OK. With that, we're done with the slider settings. Below them, we have the Developer Tools section. When we open it, it has one option, which, if enabled, will display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode. I'll put this back now. OK. Now we can switch over to the Style tab and see what's in there. The first section is for styling the slider navigation which I turned off, so I don't get any options here. I'll enable it a bit later so we can see which options fall under this section. For now, let's proceed to the slider pagination style. In here, we can pick the pagination position, whether the bullets will be on the inside or the outside. I'll switch to the outside. Then we have the pagination offset option. We can use it to shift the bullets closer to or further away from the device frame. There. Now my bullets aren't hidden. I'll leave them here so we have a good view. After that, you can change the pagination color. You can use this slider to set a new color or type in a hex code for the shade you want. That's what I'll do. There. So this was the normal view, but there's also the active view, where we can set a pagination color that will show only on the bullet that's connected to the active slide, the slide in the middle. OK. Carrying on, we have the border type option. It lets us frame the pagination bullets. I'll set solid to show you, and give it a width of 2 pixels, and then set a color so it becomes visible. And there, we have a thin red border around each bullet that makes our pagination. I'll reset this as I don't plan on using a border. OK. Next, we have the pagination size option. It's very straightforward. By increasing the value, we increase the size of the bullets. I'll set 9 pixels for mine. And after that, the space between bullets option lets us space out the pagination bullets if we want to. I'll set 8 pixels for this. OK. Our next section is device slider style, or our second layer in the slider. The device bottom offset allows us to shift the device frame further up or down in relation to the bottom slider layer. You can also use negative values here, which is what I'll do. I'm going to set minus 60 pixels to make the device frame hang down a bit. Next, we have the device right offset. It lets us move the frame further to the right. I'm going to switch to percentages for this one. And then you can see how it works. I'll set 6% for the value here. There. The device width option is also going to get a value in percentages. And it works like this. I'm going to set 25 pixels for my device frame. OK. After that, we have the image border radius. I'll switch to percentages. We had a bit of a heads up for this option earlier. It lets us smooth out the edges that peek out from the frame here. You can use the slider so it's easy to see when the edges round out enough and disappear from you. Finally, we have the image offsets. As you can see, this option lets us adjust the image offset in case it doesn't perfectly fit in the frame. For the value here, I'll just set 1 pixel all around the image. And now we covered everything but the navigation style options. I'll enable the navigation now so we can take a look at those remaining options. And when we look at that section in the Style tab, there are several things we can now change, such as the navigation position. It's inside by default. 
If we switch it to outside, it's not visible as the slider is full width, so there's no room outside of it. And it can be together, which places the arrows in the bottom left corner. I'll put them back on the inside. The next option, Hide Navigation, lets us set below which screen width the navigation arrows will stop being visible. There are a few choices here, you can try them all out and see how they look on different devices. After that, we have the Navigation Vertical Offset, which lets us move the position of the arrows up or down. And we have the same for the Horizontal Offset, so we can move the arrows closer together or further apart. Then we can replace our left navigation arrow by picking something from the icon library or by uploading an SVG. So that's arrow previous, and we have the same for arrow next, or the right arrow. Then we can change the color of the navigation arrows, like so. We can also give the arrows, or their holder to be precise, a background color. I'll keep this just to show you the following few options. The navigation arrow size increases the arrow size, but it also affects the holder as you can't expand the arrow without expanding the space that holds it. The navigation arrow holder width option lets us increase the width of the arrow's holder as we can see from the background color. And we have some settings for the view on hover. And we have some settings for the view on hover. One is the navigation arrow holder color. That color is only visible when someone hovers over an arrow. Besides that, we can also set a background color that would appear on hover, for example like this. And finally, we can enable the hover arrow move. So this movement effect that appears on hover can be switched off, this set to now. See? Nothing moves when you have this set to now. And that's it for our slider navigation style options. I'll just go back and disable the navigation as it's not part of my planned design. Just a moment. There and I'll update the page to save my work. This is my finished slider now. All three items with different images for each layer of the slider are here and looping smoothly. The device frame layer looks good and the images fit well inside it. For this tutorial, I copied one of the examples from the widgets page. If we go back to that page, we can see it now. You can think of this page as a source of ideas or inspiration, or you can straight out copy the designs. In either case, you should now have the tools and knowledge to make whatever kind of slider you like using the previous slider widget from the key add-ons for Elementor plugin. We covered all the options offered by this widget and now it's up to you to see how you'd like to combine them for your site. Ultimately, I hope going through this together has helped you to see how easy making these double layer sliders can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its preview slider widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching.